Timberborn is a base building survival game where you command a village of beavers in order to survive a harsh world that killed even the humans off. Starting out, there is only the woodworking class, but once you get that town's well-being to 15, you'll unlock the ones that focus on iron. You start your base off with one building and one building alone, a district building. It acts as a hub that you connect roads or paths to to build your town around. To build and survive, your town needs sufficient resources. You can plant berry bushes, carrots, potatoes, wheat, flowers, and numerous types of trees. On top of that, you can plant basically whatever else you may need to survive. Berries and carrots are the tutorial items and they will do well when it comes to getting you through some pretty harsh times. The more you experiment though and take risks regarding food, the better it may turn out so keep that in mind. In order to build, you need logs. You can mark trees for beavers to cut down, placing a lumberjack flag to assign the workers to. They will then chop down the trees using their teeth over time, risking the chance of them breaking so keep an eye on that. Once logs are gathered, they will be stored until needed for building. Trees may grow back over time depending on the drought due to the lack of water causing what's left of the tree to die off. Once you get a forester, you can plant your own though as I mentioned earlier so don't be afraid to gather a surplus of logs whenever you have beavers to spare. When it comes to the survival of your beavers themselves, they need food and they need water. I already discussed how to gain food, but for water, the development of a water pump is needed. Water and other liquids, such as syrup, will be stored in tanks around your base. Aesthetically, it is very pleasing to the eye to see your resources build up, although I do believe that the resource requirement for the medium water tank is far too big of a departure from the requirement for the medium food storage, and I'd prefer if they were both as easy to get, relatively speaking, as the food storage is. I like everything progressing simultaneously, but it takes a hot minute to get the gears required for the medium tank, so it kind of feels disconnected whenever I'm building my base. In order to increase the population of your town, you need houses for them to mate within. It'd be kind of weird if they were just doing it all out and about in front of each other. Other, but they gotta woohoo quick because they grow old fast and they need kids to continue their bloodline as well as to, I don't know, keep the town running. Oh boy, this gives me the perfect opportunity to bring up my favorite part of the game, stacking buildings. As you have the ambition to expand your town, you can build buildings beside one another like every other game in the genre. Or you can build them on top of one another, making buildings accessible by stairs, connecting buildings with bridges, building decorative or well-being enhancing buildings on top of buildings. It gives you a lot of variety and originality when it comes to your town and how it not only looks, but how it's designed to be traversed as well. No two districts will ever look alike, and even though their buildings will have the same fundamental functions, when it comes to how they function within the town in general, it will differ depending on the layout. I do have to say that one of my bigger issues with the game may be due to this as well. After building a building, no matter what it is, as far as I can tell you are not able to freely move it afterwards. You can destroy it, and now you can gain resources back, but you can't pick it up and place it elsewhere. That sense of permanence does add a layer of consequences and cause you to think before deciding where to place things, but it also hurts the amount of risks I'm willing to take when it comes to making my town my own as well. Following through with ideas I have for a layout is far easier to do when I can freely course correct whenever I miscalculate, and although it trades in some feelings of tension for that to happen, that pick up and move ability does add to the fun factor for me and I can feel its absence reflecting upon it. As the town develops in size, it does in technology as well. In order to gain technological advantages, you have to use science points that you gain over time with inventors that give one science point an hour and observatories that gives 10. Those points can be used to gain the ability to make bigger houses, bigger storage buildings, more technologically advanced buildings, like one to even create automated robots, more advanced water related systems, and more. Anything that helps the beavers better understand the world that they live in and the universe around them. The beavers act like us in that regard. They gain well-being with activities like campfires, showers, temples for religion, medical beds for sick beavers, 
grindstones to sharpen their teeth, kind of like how we have to sharpen saws after a long day's work. Even bedtime is dictated by the end of work hours. These well-being focused buildings are extremely important to the overall health and the mental health of the village, but every time one is being built, it means less workers building resource focused buildings, dams, collecting water and food, and logging or mining. Managing your beavers and their priorities is very important to day by day survival, and sometimes happiness and even sleep needs to be sacrificed in order to make it to the next day. On top of that though, they also begin to be able to use electricity, powered by water, by air, in order to use buildings like smelters and lumber mills capable of creating more advanced resources that lead to more advanced buildings. Then the cycle continues. The thing that makes them beavers though is their ability to do the one thing they are known for, building those dams I mentioned earlier. A lot of the strategy and survival aspects of this game are due to a drought that happens sporadically depending on difficulty and settings. Building dams can help conserve water, but they can also cause flooding, restrict water from reaching other areas, and be detrimental whenever you have multiple districts that you have to keep track of. The basic dam blocks most water but allows some to pass through a spillway on the top. A levee completely blocks water and is very useful in containing water for use during a drought. Floodgates are useful for water control in order to prevent possible floodings. You get the idea. Balancing the mixing and matching of these different dams can make or break the well-being of your village and can be life or death when it comes to its inhabitants. Using floodgates is important, but floodgates aren't flat surfaces so you can't build upon them and dams using them can't be considered paths. You can't make a dam that has floodgates a bridge, whereas if you have levees and basic dams creating your overall dam, both are considered flat and therefore the dams with them can double as a bridge as well. Working smarter and not harder is the name of the game, but sacrifices have to be made in order to do so. Although all these systems can be stressful, the calming music that plays in the background as well as the sound effects that are activated depending on the buildings you tap help the game feel like it's at your pace and helps you keep a level head as things start to go awry. It sounds small, but it definitely helps, or at least it did me anyway. The music is uplifting yet calming with dramatic moments that perfectly balance the tranquilic setting of a small town. It gives me vibes from anime with a medieval fantasy setting at times, but it always seems to fit, even when it slows down to quiet and emotional strings. All the sound effects differ from one another as well, although there aren't warning sounds for even when disasters such as flooding occurs, which their inclusion would greatly enhance my experience with the game, especially since the struggle gets real at points. The more you attempt to build, advance, evolve, the more you risk losing everything. Cost reward, actions and consequences, the butterfly effect kicks in hard whenever you least expect it. The more you build, the more workers you need, the more food you need to feed them, water to hydrate them, houses to house them, which also means it also increases how the drought will affect them. It's up to you to decide what's worth the risk and what is it and what consequences you would be able to live with because you are Timberborn. So at the end of the day, do I recommend this game? If you are a fan of the base building genre, I do. Base building games in and of themselves are practically the same game over and over again. The thing that differentiates them from one another are setting, characters, mechanics, and what really revolutionizes them and sets them apart within the genre. Being able to build houses upon houses, buildings upon buildings, having beavers and their well-being needed to be taken into account even if it's mental well-being, physical well-being, it doesn't really matter because all of it has different bars and different things that it can improve. Having to be 
focused on a completely different species other than ourselves and not have to worry about an outside force of monsters or enemies, but instead the main threat being the world and how the world is having constant droughts and conditions that are not fit for us leads to a very stressful but a very fun and entertaining experience. If you want something more low key, there's settings for that. You can turn off the drought, you can make your own experience but in the normal experience as it is meant to be played and even on the harder difficulties this game is a blast and i wholly recommend it to anybody else who decides that it might be a little bit up their alley all that aside if you like this video and you want to join the discord join the community we are welcome to have you but if not i'm glad that you stayed this long i appreciate you i appreciate the developers and the publishers whoever did it i don't know who's in Involved, but all of y'all for giving me the key for making such a good game for listening to feedback and for putting in the effort to make this the best game that it can be it's inspiring to see and it gives me hope for the future of gaming for more news reviews and whatever we choose stay tuned to nerds feed thank you have a great day